does the government currently now, in your opinion, um, violate the rights of Native Americans? I think that there hasn't been much action um, by any administration. I know we're in a very unique time right now, um, <laughs> to say the least. And um, But I still think that some of the atrocities that happened many years ago, um, I think that we think we've done our piece and um, made things fair, but I don't think that's true. Um, and I see a lot of um, social injustice that's continuing to trickle down um, families and in our community that um, I don't think we've made it right yet. And it's kind of a forgotten community and we've um, put people on reservations and I think that's good enough. <laughs> Native Americans have been living in Minnesota for thousands of years. Archaeologists have dated some artifacts to be from 12,000 years ago. Throughout Minnesota's history, many different tribes have called it home. The Arapaho, Cheyenne, Chippewa, Ojibwe, Dakota Sioux, Fox, and Salk. Today, 1.2% of Minnesota's population is American Indian with the two major tribes, Ojibwe and Sioux, making up the bulk of that number. Currently, there are seven Ojibwe reservations in northern Minnesota and four Dakota communities in the south. Um, I am Jace Gilbertson, and I am a registered nurse care coordinator uh, here at the Native American Community Clinic. I'm also the nursing supervisor. Um, I actually just started working here in January, um, so not very long, about four months. In talking about the Native American populations as a whole, what do you think is the most impacting. Let's assume that they're drunk and um, don't actually have serious medical conditions going on and we've had patients die um, from infections that were missed just because they would show up very intoxicated but there was this kind of preconceived conception that they didn't have anything else going on they were just drunk again um, and so that's one thing we deal with. Um, we do call it uh, 911 a lot here, and I find that there is a stigma that um, a lot of the emergency responders and police and fire departments have um, to our population. Um, and this is just my experience um, that they often don't receive. Human rights violation that the population has experienced either in the past or present. Yeah, um, from my perspective, and I come from a very, um, privileged and um, white perspective, um, but from what I've gathered and through my experience, um, I think there's a lot of familial trauma and um, historical trauma that still um, is impacting people today, and it's impacting all generations, even our, the children we see in the clinic here, all the way to the adults, um, stemming from being put four sons of reservations and um, not given the proper uh, resources to live a uh, prosperous life. Um, we have a lot here at the clinic. We um, take care of a lot of families, um, and that's really important for our patients. But in a lot of the families we see, specifically with substance abuse, we see that when people have um, elders that have struggled with substance abuse, we see it trickle down all the way into, we have 11 and 12 year olds and um, young people who are starting to deal with the same things. So I think there's definitely this common thread that the trauma that their elders have experienced in the past is still affecting them today. For decades, the leaders of the United States have stomped on the rights of the American Indian. In Minnesota, one of the worst offenses was conducted 
It was also the largest mass execution in America's history. On December 26, 1862, 38 Dakota Indians were executed by hanging on the orders of President Lincoln. They were 38 of originally 303 who were sentenced to death. This event had occurred after the Santee Sioux Uprising in August of that year, when several tribes attacked white settlements and towns due to the government's promises of food, land, shelter, and payment not being fulfilled. After the uprising was forcefully subdued, the government removed almost all land from the tribal nations of Minnesota, displacing its people. Our patient population is very severely affected by the opiate crisis. Um, and just in this neighborhood that we're in right now, we see the highest rate of opiate-related overdose deaths. Um, and so we feel very lucky to have the space and a uh, place where people can come and get treatment. Um, and then the other part of my job, I'm the nursing supervisor, so I coordinate um, pregnancy, little kids, all the way to end-of-life care. Um, we see a lot of chronic illnesses in the population that we, requires a lot of care management. So, Have you ever witnessed an active uh, discrimination against uh, American Indian populations? Um, I would say, uh, and yes. <laughs> I used to work in an emergency room before I worked here as a nurse. Um, and I think what, from what I've seen is that um, we do have a pop, the population I work with, the Native American community struggles a lot with substance abuse. Um, and I found that through my experience in an emergency room and even here, um, it is definitely a barrier and that the general public has put up for them that, for instance, I'll send somebody to the emergency room for a very severe illness um, and they do have a history of, they call them frequent flyers in the emergency room and they often, um, when they come in, we kindness of care um, and the most appropriate care. So in your work, what do you think are the predominant um, problems that the community faces? Um, I'd say health-wise, um, I think, and in terms of our patients, it's access to health care um, is a big barrier in people not living healthy lives. Um, we are very uh, accepting of our clients and their, their lives. We know that they live pretty chaotic lives um, brought on by their socioeconomic status. A lot of our patients are homeless. Um, and so we are pretty understanding when people miss appointments and um, kind of come in in crisis. And we have that happen a lot. Um, and so there's definitely barriers out there for people to receive adequate health care. Um, we see a lot, I think about our top few diagnoses would be diabetes, un very uncontrolled diabetes, um, which I think definitely stems from um, past trauma and being um, forced onto reservations and forced into government commodities, um, a more unhealthy lifestyle and suffer with diabetes and you see a lot of amputations from foot ulcers and things that stem from uncontrolled diabetes and it's a really, really, we try to do the best we can. We have a full dietitian staff here um, to try to do the best changes we can. We know that our patients live on a very tight budget for the most part and so making dietary changes such as, you know, they can only afford canned fruit, so wash your canned fruit. It'll remove 60% of the, the sugar that's in the syrup. The substance abuse is our other main thing, opiate and alcohol use. We're starting to see a lot more meth use as well. Um, so just we provide full service there, um, very non-judgmental care, kind of meet them where they're at. From what I've seen um, in my patient population, um, I see it very hard for my patients to get jobs. Um, a lot of them are dealing with legal issues, child protection issues, um, and those things are kind of staying with them. Um, and when they can't get jobs, then they don't have the motivation to stay sober. Um, and that's kind of this vicious cycle of um, being trapped and why try if I know I'm not gonna, mm -hmm. my past is gonna continue to um, be a barrier to me succeeding. Yeah. So um, that's one. And, you know, the neighborhood that this clinic is in, um, there's a lot of gang activity and um, violence and murders and 
we are not um, we're not surprised when we find out that some of our patients have been murdered over the weekend and or overdosed over the weekend. I think that uh, most clinics um, in the area are dealing with the same thing. Native Americans have always gotten the short end of the stick, to put it lightly. Their populations, even today, suffer ill effects from the generations of oppression and violations that their elders faced. In city neighborhoods and reservations alike, American Indians face copious amounts of poverty, gang activity, drugs, and health problems. America clearly has a history of brutality when it comes to anyone who differs from the norm. And the story of Native Americans is just one of the many examples. If the government remains stubborn in its efforts to aid Native populations, then the citizens have to help in whatever ways they can. So please, volunteer at a homeless shelter in the Native American corridor, plan a mission trip to a reservation, or just simply donate money to a number of different organizations that help the American Indian survive. We must do what is right and make sure that the beautiful cultures and varied peoples that fall under the Native American banner do not disappear, like so many others before them.